first ever Tide Talk with Webb. Anyway, let's get straight down to business. Uh, recruiting. We need some defensive backs. We have several going to the NFL. And we had some departures last year, which we have to replace. So let's get into it. Uh, we have Xavier McKinney. He's the number three safety in the country. We have, according to Rivals, we also have Daniel Wright. Uh, both of those guys are six foot and six one, respectively, about 180. They can gain probably 15, 20 pounds, and it won't hurt their speed. They're amazing. We need those guys to come in. Uh, we also have uh, Kyrick McDonald, if I'm saying that right. Uh, he's about a three star, not highly rated, but Saban does work miracles with those guys. So we'll see what happens. We also have a Juco that I think if he doesn't wind up if he stays committed to the, the tide uh he's from blinn uh, community college uh javante dean he could be a huge help big home run hitter for us big guy he heavy hitter great hands so that would be big uh some news to watch out for uh we have a miami uh, cornerback uh henderson uh he's visiting alabama uh but he we have a, a big push uh for florida uh next weekend and also, he's from Miami, so there's always the threat of him going to Miami. Uh, we're hoping to, to get him. Um, <clears throat> he also wants playing time, so that could be an issue. But if he's good enough, he will see the field. So there's that. Oh, another news. Again, Alabama lost a kicker. We lost Eddie Panera last year to Florida. I don't know why he went to Florida. Obviously, you know, Florida has made some runs in the East because the East is clearly weak. But I digress. We lost them. For whatever reason, we didn't sign them. McElwain signed them. Good on them. Uh, we had a guy uh, from Gilbert, Arizona. That's where I live currently. Actually, I live in Tucson, but same state. was hoping he would go to Bama. Uh, Brennan Ruiz, great kicker. He, for whatever reason, decommitted. I don't know why. Because he it seems to be really good, and I think he would be you know straight into a starter. I don't know if they were looking at gray shirting him or giving him a partial scholarship, but for whatever reason he decommitted, and that stinks. Because we need some kickers, evidently. In other news, uh, the hack known as Scar or Scarbinski. Uh, yeah, we all know he's an Auburn fanboy and Homer doesn't like. Doesn't like the Tide. But he wrote a scathing article that said defense doesn't win championships. Well, I beg to differ. Out of the last, like, ten national championships, only two teams have won it that had a subpar defense. The, all the teams that have won it have a big, strong defenses. Yes, you have to have some offense in there, of course, to win a national championship. You have to have a good offense. Well, we had the SEC Offensive Player of the Year. He was a freshman. Yes, he struggled down the way with passing and some some of the times in the games, especially in the uh, SEC Championship. And we saw it again uh, when we played Washington, and we saw it against Clemson. There were receivers that dropped balls. And, yes, he overthrew quite a few receivers. Um, no, I do not uh, succumb to the feeling like Skarbinski that you can have a subpar defense and have an amazing offense. I mean, you put any quarterback in there except for uh, Watson playing for Clemson, we win that game. Uh, you could even make the argument if both Scarborough didn't get hurt early third quarter. Uh, we could have at least had enough drives or had one or two drives just to eat up two or three minutes, possibly four, without even scoring any more points than 31, and we win the game. It's over. It's done. So I think he's kind of reaching at straws for that one. Um, yeah, I get it. Auburn in 2010 had Cam Newton. So, of course, you know, he could have probably played for Mississippi State that year. They would have won a national championship. It was a, a year a lot of teams were banged up, beat up, and he took advantage, and he was great. He was one of those quarterbacks like Watson, who's only you know one or two of them come through in the decade, that they legitimately can run and pass just as good. It doesn't matter. You could keep him in the pocket all night, and it will eat you apart if you give him time. Um, yeah, I get it. You know, Last year's national championship game that Bama won, uh, we gave up 40 points. Yeah. Um, but it's also hard to stop a guy that you can't rush because if you overrush and you over pursue, he's gone. Watson is done. Um, you know, we had some great things happen in, in the, late in the game, you know, where we had an onside kick and then we ran one back for a touchdown with Kenyon Drake, you know, so 
those things put us over the top. This year, we were unable to, we had a dismal third down uh, completions, I mean conversions, and so that killed us, and that was very evident in that it absolutely killed us. You know, no excuses, they played the better. Hats off to them, they did a great job, but then again, think about it. We have two drives, one in the third, one in the fourth. We still score 31 points, but we can eat up four minutes on the clock with Scarborough running. He doesn't go down. I think we win the game, but you know, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no prizes for second place, and there's no use crying over spilled milk because the bottom line is we lost the game. Clemson won. They were better that night. Usually, our defense in the past always comes up big for whatever reason. It wasn't our time. I'm proud as hell of the team. You know, there's nothing to hang our heads about. I mean, we lost the last two seconds of a game to one of probably the best quarterbacks I've seen in college football. And I've been watching college football for a while now. So, you know. Um, and then again, unfortunately, the defense played way too many snaps. I mean, Lord have mercy. I mean, we played – we were on the field for more than 100 snaps. I mean, that's totally unacceptable. That's just – you can't do it. Yeah, I know that Skarvinsky makes the argument that, okay, so we played uh, Oklahoma and they put a bunch of points up on us. Well, we played Ohio State in a semifinal and they put a bunch of points up on us. Uh, Clemson put a bunch of points of us on the national championship game. These are very dynamic offenses. These offenses gave everybody trouble. It wasn't just Bama. Um, I still will say that you you have to have a very good offense, but you also have to have a great defense. And, yeah, we had some injuries. I'm not making excuses. We struggled. We were on the field too long. But then again, some of that goes back to offense. If we could have just had a sustained drive, you know, in the, in the in the third and the fourth quarter, that could have just eaten up two extra minutes in the you know third and two extra minutes in the fourth. Game's over, done, data, you know. But the defense got tired. Hats off to Clemson; they did a great job. But I will never succumb to the fact that you know the the era of of great defenses don't win championships. I, I totally disagree, and I will never never subscribe to that. Now, Saban's an innovator, and he'll always get somebody, whether it's changing the offense, whether it's taking, you know, like he when he first came in, he had 250-pound linebackers. Well, now he's got 225 guys that are rangy and really fast. So he will adapt. Uh, the sky's not falling. Bama's going to be good. As long as Saban's there, it's all good. Wish we could still have Kirby Smart, but that's not an option. Okay. Uh, you know, some things that... Uh, we have uh, more news as far as recruiting goes. We got some guys leaving for the NFL. Uh, got some holes to plug. Uh, we have, especially on the defense, uh, the outlook for next year is still good. But like I said, this list going to the NFL, we have Eddie, Eddie Jackson, we have Marlon Humphrey, we have Jonathan Allen, da- Dalvin Tomlinson, Ruben Foster, Tim Williams, and Ron Anderson, which those are huge holes to plug. Those are great guys and run stoppers. They can uh, play in pass coverage. So, That will be some holes to fill. But I think we can do it because we recruit four and five stars, and we just have to to develop them. And we will. It's not a big deal. It'll happen. Uh, The good thing is that we have Minka Fitzpatrick coming back. The guy's a home run hitter. So we got him coming back. we got Ryan Harrison with lots of experience. We have Anthony Everett with lots of experience. You also have Hootie Jones and Nigel Knott. They have a little bit of experience, but not as much. So we'll just keep... um, Developing these guys, the new guys that come in, like I said, Javante Dean, I think is, is going to be a great player. Um, I think he's going to make an immediate impact. And hopefully he will stay the course and go ahead and sign with Bama in February. Uh, Xavier McKinney and, and Daniel Wright, I think, have all the physical tools to play right away. Uh, they may struggle next year. I look for us to at least win 10 games. I don't know how good we're going to be, but I think we'll be good enough to um, challenge for the West and – like I said, we just have to develop. You know, later in the season, by the time we get to LSU, those guys will be tested. The young guys will be tested. A lot of teams are rebuilding. Yes, Bama's getting gutted. We will be okay. Uh, the sky's not falling. Just have to uh, keep going. Well, that's my report for this week on Tie Talk with Webb. And uh, in the future, we're going to have really good uh, guests. I'm going to have Filthy Phil on here. Uh, probably going to have uh, <clears throat> Madman Mark. Going to have the Satulation Mr. Satch on here as well. And uh, we may also have uh, Pop Webb. He's a great uh, Bama fan, personally my dad, and he's been a Bama fan since, oh, I don't know, about 40 years. Got a lot of knowledge on the game, 
And uh, I'll probably do one more video this week on some recruiting notes and news. And look out for that. Holler at you.